Today, I am hiking in Naxos, Greece, and we are doing the hike to Apano Castro. Hi, I'm Megan Murad, a licensed New York City tour guide, but today I'm exploring Naxos, so we're gonna see what we can see on this hike. Now, full disclosure, I am here with my two best friends. I am a horrible hiker. I walk a lot in New York City. I'm a city girl, but I'm not good with rocks and going uphill. Not my thing. My two best friends are actually really great at outdoorsy stuff, hiking. One of them even climbed the Alps. Ooh, la, la. So we're going to let you know how hard it is. We're going to give you, I guess, three different opinions and show you some awesome sights along the way so that if you visit Naxos, you can have your very best hike. But first, remember to hit subscribe so you never miss a travel tip or a trick. Uh -huh. Muffin talk. Ooh, muffin talk. Muffin talks. Bringing healing to those who need them most. To start your hike, you're going to have to park your car. So, um, thanks to online information, we found a free parking lot the north end of Anopotamia. Forgive me if I am not pronouncing that correctly, but I will put a link in the bio. Also, just so you know, um, if you're driving here, first of all, you need to get an international driver's license. I'll put a link in the description um, for how you can do that. But the drive isn't necessarily like easy. There's a lot of really sharp curves on what for my born in Florida, <laughs> live in New York City self was a little bit scary, but I persevered. Uh, and when you find this parking lot, it's actually quite beautiful. So we've parked our car and now we're going to get started on our walk. This is my friend Kara. She's the one that's actually gone hiking in the Alps. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she has long legs. So we're gonna see how well I can keep up with her. Um, she also put out the fact that a lot of times when she's gone hiking in the past, she didn't know if there was parking. Um, maybe I should mention whether or not you can take public transportation. The answer is we don't actually know. We were told to rent a car in Naxos. Um, I would strongly recommend that you do rent a car because almost every place that you want to go outside of like the specific village where you're staying is going to need a car. So we don't actually know the answer to that, but we would actually recommend, even though the roads are like a little bit scary, um, rent a car wanted to point out this sign. So we're going to Apano Castro, which means upper castle. My little bit of Duolingo was showing me that like the W is an O. So Apano Castro, the upper castle. It took us a really long time to figure this out, but these little I guess, symbols on the side, they actually tell you about how long the walk is going to be. So the walk to Chalky will be one hour. The walk to the upper castle will be about 30 minutes. So, discovering as we go along. To my Floridian self, this looks mighty steep. I'm letting Kara and Kat go ahead and test it out. I guess that means I have to run up and follow them. This is not necessarily the best plan. The view is gorgeous. I'm breathing kind of heavily, <laughs> but the view is gorgeous. So we're climbing up the hill. I don't know if we're halfway, a quarter of the way, an eighth of the way. <laughs> um, it's, I'm breathing heavily because it's a very, very, it's kind of steep, but it's not difficult because there's like a nice paved path. Also, like we were just in a city, or what, a city for Naxos. And now we're in what feels like the middle of nowhere. It's so gorgeous. We got to a fork in the road. Kat and Kara are here. Which side should they go to? Well, we were, we were following, um, what's the website, Kat? Earth Trekkers. Earth so I'll link the Earth Trekkers uh, article in the description below as well. And they said to go to the right, and we're gonna be on the left-hand side of a rock wall. Apparently the path will be relatively easy to follow for this part of the trail. And you'll see the blue sign that says 
Apano Castro. And what do you guys think of the walk so far? awesome it's really nice is it hard for you is it super easy there are some steep bits so it's just like cardio of going up a steep bit but they're very short yeah that's pretty much even my floridian self just feels the cardio so i've been i've been doing well so we're gonna continue up this path the rocks are sparkly i'm always game for sparkles sparkles i can talk i'm always game for sparkles on rocks or otherwise. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a sound of distant bells. Those are goats. Oh, I see the goats. I see them. There's a huge herd of goats off in the distance. I read this morning that Greece is home to over 5 million goats. Remember that fork in the road, both places? led to exactly right there. So you can take whichever one you want. We found this mini church, St. Andreas, on the trail. This is not the upper castle, but we're gonna go explore and see. Oh, it opens. Oh, whoa, this is really cool. Oh, it's painted. Yeah, wow. Finally, that's so cool. <laughs> whoa, that's really backwards. Yeah, probably. We went to visit some other churches yesterday that apparently had these glorious frescoes and they were all closed. So it's really exciting to huh, fall upon St. Andreas and actually see the frescoes. Leaving the church and continuing our intrepid journey to the upper castle and as we do that we're looking at a really cool rock let me know what you think this rock looks like is it donkey kong is it a toad is he giving a thumbs up is he holding a scepter let me know if you look at the top of that mountain it looks like there's the ruins of a castle we think that that is where we are heading also, there's no way that this is going to take anybody 30 minutes. This is a lot longer <laughs> than 30 minutes, but it's beautiful. And this is sort of the first place that I've been in Naxos where it's been really lush and green. And before we came here, all of the research said, you know, the Naxos is known for its fertile soil and its wonderful ability to grow potatoes. And this is sort of the, the first place that we've gotten a sense of that. We've approached a gate. Yeah, it just lifts off. <laughs> We've encountered a lot of these gates on our walks. Oh, I think maybe you want that break in the wall right there. Yeah, maybe. Okay. I think that these gates are really to keep the sheep and the goats on one side of the gate. And they're pretty open to you opening and closing the gate as long as you make sure that you close it. When you're done. That, um... So we've locked the gate. This area is a little confusing, just so you know. Um, instead of going straight, you go through this little hole in the wall. This is horrible advice. This is wrong advice. We went wrong here. You will see how horribly wrong we went. To find out what we did wrong and how you cannot repeat our mistakes, skip ahead to about 21 minutes into this video. <laughs> um, and we've been looking for the marker five or red markers. So you see the red marker and we're gonna continue to follow those markers to head on up. It's quite narrow. Whoop! 
you want to watch out for these bushes because they're prickly but you don't want to scratch up your legs too much so this part's getting a little more complicated i'm going to put the phone away so i don't hurt myself right. this part of the trail is not my friend i don't like this part of the trail there's all of these prickly bushes there's not an incredibly clear path we're currently trying to figure out the right path. I've been prickled by the prickly bushes. It's really hot, so I don't wish that I wore pants, but I kind of wish I wore pants. Hmm. This is Kat, um, our experienced outdoorsman, trying to go through the prickly bushes. So it's one thing for me to not like the prickly bushes. It's another thing to watch our experienced outdoorsman go through the prickly bushes so we don't know if we missed the trail or what happened what did you think of it Kara Our shorts were not a great idea <laughs> yeah I regret the shorts it's confusing because it's hot so I like the shorts but these prickly bushes I feel like I'm in a weird video game right now I think making all of this worse up at the top of this hill there are goats, and I know those goats are laughing at us. I see you goats laughing at us. Pretty sure we went the wrong way. If we didn't go the wrong way, the right way is really weird because we just spent 10 minutes climbing through a treacherous, prickly thorn wilderness <laughs> that feels like it came out of some weird video game or I don't know, like Maleficent's castle. Somehow Kara got way up there. We don't know how she got way up there. She was way below us, like literally when we started this video. And I was like, okay, while we wait, I'll give an update. <laughs> First part of the climb, super easy, super beautiful. Now I hate my two best friends for making me do this. I've decided I live here now. It's a beautiful view. I don't see a trail to get out. Only way down is to go through the prickly thorn bushes. Just gonna live life here. Yeah. Cat's down there, way down, trying to find a trail for us. Just gonna let us know we need to come back down. Through the prickly thorn bushes. I think Kat found the way. I have to go back down through the prickly thorn bushes. Okay, hopefully we're back on the path. We hope. Who knows? There's a lot of goat poop up here, so nothing else. We're just gonna live up here with the goats forever. Oh, I think there's some mating grasshoppers. Oh, wow. There's two, and one is on top of the other. And we have some mating grasshoppers. <laughs> Grasshopper sex, y'all. Am I allowed to say that on YouTube? So here's the truth, friends. We still don't know if we're on the path. It's not incredibly well marked. We climbed up some rocks and we found another church. There's Kara at the church. Uh, so we're gonna go, I guess, see if it's open. Oh, let's see if it's open. It's not! We did get to see frescoes of the other one and the view is beautiful, so. That's great. <laughs> I love beautiful views. Now we're gonna try to explore the Castro or the castle. I don't know how much of it we're gonna actually be able to get to. How did people, like, people lived here, worked here, did this every day? It's pretty crazy. <laughs> we're hoping that the, the path down is a little bit easier. 
think it looks a little bit easier. We made it to the Castro or the castle. We're actually looking from above at parts of it. So we're gonna try to explore some of that. And then if we get really brave or if we find a path, we'll go and explore way up there. It's actually really, really cool. And Kara, correct me if I'm wrong, this is an old Venetian Castro, correct? So there's a whole huge Venetian history here in Naxos, Greece that I'm excited to learn more about when I get home and read the full history. But right now I'm going to explore the castle. I got very brave and I'm now sitting on the turret overlooking the island. The view is incredible. This is unlike anything that I've ever done before in my life. And yes, the, the path to get here was, was treacherous. Parts were pretty easy and beautiful and parts were very prickly and scary, but this, this is worth it. It's amazing. I mean, when else do you get to look at Venetian ruins and a beautiful mountain range, and I can see the ocean as well. It's, ah, it's so magical. And I'm here with my two best friends, which makes it even better. So win all around. Also shout out to Kat and Kara who have been so patient with me as I'm like, will you video this? They've been awesome. I do want to point out that when you vacation, you should actually allow time to vacation and not just video. So I'm very thankful that they've been so helpful here as we explore the Castro. Just chilling in my ruined Venetian castle. This arch is really cool. It's also like, it's wonderful for taking photos. It's also wonderful for the history nerd in me. And I'm so happy I'm here. Back on the trail. <laughs> <laughs> now we find the red markers, now that we're actually in the Castro. We're getting up to the highest part of the Castro. We're doing it. Yay. It's still not particularly easy of a climb, but we're doing it. We're getting there. And we're waiting to run into those goats. They're goats that were looking down on us earlier. Off in the distance, there are so many goats. They were actually closer. One of them was sitting on this wall right here. One of them actually like leapt up and, and walked right in front of us. They might be a little scared of us right now, which is why they're going away. But a Florida girl who lives in New York City has never been this close to like a, a wild goat. So this is really exciting. The view from up here is absolutely phenomenal. We made it to the very upper level of the Castro. Once we were actually on the marked path, it became <laughs> much easier to walk up. And we are the only people here. It's us and a bunch of goats. So you get this beautiful solitude and quiet and a view that is unparalleled. Apparently there's another big hike that you can do in Naxos, which is climbing to the top of Mount Zas. That's the mountain where allegedly Zeus was, was raised. And I've been told that that's a very busy mountain where this mountain, we had it to ourselves the entire time. And it's wonderful to get in touch with nature, to explore history, to take photos and just hang out with your friends. And even when we got lost, it was an adventure. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really glad that we did it. Well, we'll see what I say on the way back down. But right now, I'm on Mount Olympus. <laughs> Not really on Mount Olympus, but <laughs> I feel like I am. I too <laughs> can sit <gasps> on the top ledge. And uh, here's the view from the very tippy top. I'm actually going to have Kara hand me my phone. And I'm going to turn it around. 
and show you this view. We have the ocean, we have the mountains, we have friends. That's, we have the sky. It's a beautiful day. So we're here in mid-October. It's, it's hot, but there's a cool breeze, which really makes the weather perfect for this intrepid journey as well. As I stand here at the top of a Pano Castro, I just read that this is where the Venetian lords used to come to stay safe when pirates came to invade Naxos. I always like anything that involves a good pirate story. We're starting our intrepid journey down. Hopefully it will be easier and involve less prickly thorn bushes than the way up. We've descended from the Castro. Kara and I both have fallen once. Cat's doing better than us. We found this pile of bones thinking maybe it's goat, but that's not ominous at all. <laughs> but so far the way down um, has been easier pathwise. We haven't fallen over <laughs> prickly thorn bushes, just the typical walking down a rocky mountain slip ups. We're seeing more of these rock piles, which are telling us we're on the right path. There's the Castro. Maybe they meant when they said this was a 30 minute hike just on the way down, because it's been a lot faster. Still a little more uh, prickly bushes than I would like, but, but it's better, it's better. We made it down from the top of the Castro to what is actually the path. So this is where we went wrong. I wanted to let you know, and my friend Kat like really tried to, to lay it out for me so I could let you know where we went wrong so you won't go wrong <laughs> at the same way. So there's this rock wall along the side. You wanna just stay along this rock wall until you reach this church. Now there's a couple of churches. So if you're confused about which church this is, you will see a sign over here that says, I can't pronounce it, see Caraliu Castle, or the Castro. When you get to that sign, that's when you're gonna wanna start a walk up here. Now you will see some prickly thorn bushes. They're there, but they're more avoidable than the weird path that we took. So that's what you need to do. When you reach this church or that sign, go up this path. Also, um, I don't know if I regret wearing shorts or not <laughs> because it is it is quite hot, but um, legs are a little scratched up. So um, make the decision that is right for you. We're gonna continue back down to the car. There's this little gate right by the sign. Now there's a really pretty path. We're not sure, but we think that if you continued this way, you would get to the town of Halki we came not from Halki, so we're going to go along the path. Trail marker five. This way. You'll see trail marker five. Those are the trail markers that we were supposed to be following. We thought we were following them. We failed at following them. <laughs> but, you know, learn from our mistakes. That's part of why I'm making this video and why my friends have been so patient with me making this video. So find that trail marker. And when you're coming up, you're going to stay along. This rock wall, you'll see the sign, you'll see the church. You'll come around here. You'll go up the gate. And then there's more of a path with less treacherous prickly thorn bushes going up to the Castro. Here's the fence that we locked. This is where we really went wrong. So we came through the fence and I, I don't really know what we did, but we were supposed to just go straight. Just go that way and follow the path. Don't go up there. I think what we did instead of following the gate was we went through, there's a little hole in the wall right here, which looks like it's saying, come through me. Um, don't, don't, just, just don't say no to that. Go through the gate and then say no and then continue this way um, now we did i did point out that when we went through that way 
we did see the red marker. I don't know why there's a red marker there, uh, unless it's saying to continue to go straight, but don't do that. Go straight on this path. And we've also noticed that a lot of the number fives are on the back of the rocks as you're going this way. So keep your, keep your eyes open. See, here's the red marker, but it's on the back of the rock. So as you walk forward, it's harder to see. Crazy pants. Here's a perfect example of how when we are walking forwards towards the Castro, there's like a little tiny red mark, but we don't see the number five. Easy to go through, da, 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 da. never see the number five. Walking back, there's the number five. <laughs> very, 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 very clear. Walking there, one little red mark. Walking back, number five. This is literally the first person that we've seen this whole time other than us. And we're almost back at the car. You can see how far away the Castro is from us now. We made it back to the parking lot, back where we parked our car. Uh, just so you know, where we parked is right next to a really cute taverna. It's not open now. I think it's because we're visiting in October and almost everything has been closed. Wah, wah. But the beautiful mountain was open. Um, so if you come here another time, it'd be so great to like end your hike at the taverna, have a glass of wine, have some cheese. That would be wonderful. Um, okay, concluding thoughts. I am not much of a hiker. The way up, because we kind of got lost in the path, was really, really treacherous. <laughs> I should say really, really treacherous, but I was very frustrated by that. But the view was totally worth it. And then on the way down, once we had the right path, it was much, much better. Um, I'm actually going to ask Kara, who's holding the camera, what she thought. Now, she's actually climbed in the Alps. So what did you think, Kara? I would say it was difficult. Um but I think if we'd stayed on the path, it would have been doable for anyone who's in like relatively good shape. And I'm gonna ask Kat, who is my token outdoors person. I'm gonna come stand near her, so the mic is somewhat near her. What did you think of the hike? Oh, I thought it was glorious. I usually look for hikes that have more of a defined trail, like the whole way, um, but I w if we hadn't been led astray by uh, right after the gate, the hole in the wall that had the marks on it, um, then I think it would have been totally fine. The view from the top is incredible, and I always love a hike that you're entirely alone. So that was a win for me. Yeah. So we were entirely alone. It was beautiful. Um, even for my, I don't go up hills, like I consider <laughs> like the smallest hill a mountain. Um, it was worth it. Uh, so yeah, I think that we're all like relatively fit, but I'm not experienced at all at climbing upward. So I would say to totally do it. Just make sure that you stay on the path and bring good friends and you will get glorious views. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoy your own trip to Naxos. And if you visit the Castro, the Castro as well, make sure that you hit subscribe so you never miss a travel tip or a trick. Thanks for watching.